Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel and in this series. Today we're gonna kickstart September with this next part of the chest and I'm gonna be showing you three very important like secret tools that we're gonna be using here inside of Maya. Now they're not necessarily like secret secret, they're I've been using them for quite a while, but are, these are like three tools that I consider very, very important for anyone doing modeling inside of Maya. So if we take a look at this chest, one of the things that I see is this upper part right here, where we have this very cool like metal plate, um, kind of like protecting or reinforcing the upper part of our chest, right? And one of the tools that I love, love, love to using here inside of Maya is this life surface option. So you can select an object like this one, hit the life surface option, and now if we go, if we go to the Quattro, one of the things that's going to happen is if we start placing dots you're gonna see that this dots actually follow the shape or the form of the object so it's very very easy to build something that hugs the surface of the element in a well nicer way now in this case I actually just need to do this sort of like uh, like middle section thing so I'm gonna go like this with quadra just drawing this and as with everything we've done so far, it is important that we take like topology or the flow of topology into consideration. So here I can see that this thing goes like in this direction, then kind of like flat and then all the way over here into this sort of like triangular looking shape. There we go. So we don't need to do both sides of the element, right? We know that uh, we have the mirror option and the mirror option should allow us to mirror this thing nicely. Just gonna create a little bit of a line right here. I definitely want to get into the middle line. You're gonna see why in just a second. And then now we just keep like adding a couple of points right here. So that's pretty much it on this side. And the, I actually like I don't want to have this point on the back side. So I'm just gonna continue this to the back like this and reinforce it maybe like with like a square shape. Actually, no, I don't want to go all the way there. I think that should be more than enough. That looks good. Now I do want this to go to the both like sides of this element. So I'm gonna just like push this forward. As you can see, even though this is hidden, it still like properly analyzes the surface and it knows that it needs to snap to the surface of this like wooden planks. There we go. So yeah, that's it. Now, if you're using the Quadra tool, very common thing, like you get this like floating points every now and then, just double click on the tool or go over here and double click this part right here and just clear dots. And that's gonna give you a cleaner effect right there. With this, I'm going to isolate, go to the front view, grab all of the vertex here on the front, scale them with R, scale them down like that. Actually, let me turn on Karnak real quick so that you guys can see the shortcuts. There we go. And I'm going to grab the whole object and do a mirror. This is going to be object X and positive. I am going to combine with original, merge the borders and everything and hit apply. And this is what we should get. A very nice, like, randomly it's not like perfectly clean but that's fine because we want to have this sort of like um like man-made structure there we go now control e we need to like uh deselect life surface so that we don't are not affected by it anymore and we just push this forward like this and that's it now this is a little bit too thick but i know that when we do number three which is our smooth mode it's gonna like soften things up a little bit i might want to bring this a little bit lower so right around there and what we can do, which is what we've been doing so far, is we can go to our cut tool, insert one edge loop right there, and one edge loop right here. Oh, right there. Perfect. So now, as you can see, we get this very nice, like, metal bit, metal effect. It's going to be hugging the upper part of the chest. It's going to give us a just an, a nice little, like, finish to the whole thing. So that's one of the first tricks. Now, here's the second one. Booleans. Booleans are one of those things that people... Like, like, booleans get a bad rap, right? Like, people always tell you, do not use booleans, booleans suck, they're gonna give you horrible topology, and yes, usually, that's what you're gonna get, unfortunately, but that doesn't mean that we can't use them. So, for instance, this piece right here, this golden piece, which is what I wanna focus on right now, has this very interesting shapes on the elements. Can we use booleans as a way to create this shape in an easier manner? And the answer is yes. So, I'm gonna start with a cube right here. I'm gonna bring this up. And let's make this cube a little bit bigger. I'm going to make this a lot wider. I'm going to go with my cut tool. Insert one edge loop right there. Let's do one right there and one right there. Should be fairly symmetrical. We grab those like bottom faces and we're going to extrude these guys down here. And then another thing we could do, for instance, is... Actually, let's go like all the way there. We could break i'm gonna break a lot of the rules that we normally have in in modeling and i'm gonna explain why in just a second and uh, i want to bevel 
let's say this edge, this edge, we're going to bevel both of those. Let's give them segments in a small fraction to give them like the round effect. And this corners, I'm also going to bevel segments in a small fraction. As you can see, we get this. So we're already breaking some rules here because this is now a non like proper topology, right? Like we are using N guns and um, and we're gonna be using booleans. So we're gonna make a mess, but I'm gonna show you a very cool tool that we have now instead of Maya that's actually actually really cool. So once we have this, I am gonna delete history and let's create a very basic shape of how I want this hole to be right there. So I'm gonna create a new cylinder. I'm gonna bring the cylinder up, rotate it so that it's facing me. And to make the booleans a little bit easier, oh, there we go. I do recommend whenever you're using booleans, try to work if possible, not always, but if possible with low amounts of resolution. So in this case, an eighth is usually good right there. I'm going to extrude this right there. Well, let's keep it centered, even though the concept is not perfectly centered. Push it to the front. And of course, I'm going to grab these two faces, control E. And we're going to extrude them down and flatten them right there. So that's going to be my uh, keyhole, right? And this one's going to go pretty much through the whole thing. So I'm going to I'm going to like like perfectly go across the whole thing. And then we have another piece right here which is like a, another cylinder with rounded edges. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. Bring this one back or down. Let's rotate this so that it's facing right there. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this vertex and I'm going to snap them with the V to the side so that we get this very like symmetrical, symmetrical look. We grab the object mode and we're going to make this a smaller right there. Grab all of this guys, make them a little bit flatter and they're going to go right there. Now, why we have two like this, like in the concept, I'm not sure, but it looks cool. So let's keep with that. I'm going to now delete those uh, the history phrase transformation, and this is what we're going to be using for the Boolean. So I'm going to grab both of these elements. I'm going to combine them into a single object. I'm going to grab the first object and then the second object. And I'm going to say mesh, and then we're going to do Booleans a difference. And as you can see, what's going to happen is we're going to get the Booleans out of the element, right? Like we're going to literally go across the thing. And a lot of people, uh, I find this very funny. A lot of people, when they're starting 3D, they model like this. They just like Boolean everything and just create like very complex shapes. If you're doing games, this is a perfectly valid way to do it because the high poly, it doesn't matter what you do. You can do whatever the hell you want with high poly and it's going to work because you're going to be baking down everything into a low poly. But for subdivision workflow, which is what we've been, do what we've been doing so far, where we want our topology to be very, very, very clean, right? Like on all of these elements, it's very important to try to avoid doing these things right here. Now, Maya has this new topology or Boolean options where you can actually modify things pretty much like uh, like in um, ZBrush, where you have this live Boolean options and you can like just move things around and, and decide what's best for you. In this case, this is perfectly fine. So I'm just going to select the original or the resulting mesh. I'm just going to say delete history and that's going to give me the final piece. Now, how the hell do we clean this piece? Well, one thing we can do is we can try, for instance, giving this a couple of bevels. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So, for instance, I'm going to try to grab all of these elements right here. There we go. And let's hit a bevel. In this case, it did work, which is great. That's really nice. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try to bevel all of the elements or the edges that I want to bevel. So, in this case, it's all of this ones right here. Give me one second. So the important, unfortunate thing with uh, booleans is that since topology is not good or it's not perfect, um, all of this becomes a little bit more tedious, not difficult, just a little bit more tedious. And again, I know topology right now is looking horrible, 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 but we can still, as you can see, work on some stuff. So for instance, this piece right here, especially if you don't see the topology, you don't really know that this is like not working properly. And here's where there's a new tool. I'm not saying this is the best tool, but it's a new tool, let me save real quick, which is the remeshing tool. So if we go to mesh, we have this retopologize tool that should allow us to, like as the name implies, retopologize this thing into something that's a little bit better. So right now we have a count of 146 faces. I'm going to give it all up to 1000 faces, which is fine. And I do want to make sure that it preserves hard edges. And I'm just going to hit apply and see what we get. So I'm just going to ignore and continue. And uh, let's see what we get here. Uh, wait a second. Wait a second. Did it don't work? I think it didn't work because we didn't have like a normal topology. So I'm going to say mesh and triangulate real quick. There we go. 
And now let's try retopologizing. And let's see what we get. Ah, this is really weird. What is it? Low resolution with process privilege then to with the Okay, we're gonna remove pre-process mesh. Okay, let's try that. There we go. So as you can see, this gives us something that's a little bit more usable. It's not perfect, but I'm going to leave it. I'm going to keep it just because I want to show you how we can still utilize this. It's not perfect, but you can see when we do uh, number three, it actually does work quite nicely. So we might be able to go here, for instance, to this edge loop right here, this edge loop right here, and this secondary edge loop right here, and do a bevel, two segments in a small fraction, like we've been doing. And as you can see, when we press number three, this is going to give us a nice, like, clean, smooth mesh. The one thing I don't like about this is, as you can see, we will get some um, spirals, like this one right here. We do get a lot of inefficient topology. So one thing that you might want to do is just to delete those edges, for instance, to remove anything that we're not really using. But this is... Again, not the cleanest topology, but it's workable, okay? Ideally, if we want to, like, be super optimized and stuff, we would just, like, do retopology or do a proper model from the beginning. But I wanted to show you a, another, like, little secret, which is this one right here. It works a little bit better, as you saw right there, with uh, high-definition meshes. Um, so, so keep that in mind if you're going to be using it later for your own projects. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this one. So I'm just going to have this one. It's going to be a lot uh, thinner. Oh, my God, it's going to... Yeah, because <laughs> it, still, it still has the node, the retopologize node. So when I'm trying to um, scale things, it's trying to retopologize based on the new scales. And uh, it's just going to make a mess. So important, once you're happy with the result, just bleed history. Very important. Always, always, always. Maya is very... And I'm, I'm actually surprised that it didn't crash because it usually crashes with that sort of stuff. Um, but Maya is very finicky about like um, history because a lot of things are are not meant to be, like, just, like, modified after the fact. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, finally, the last piece that I wanted to show you, uh, because this part right here, this lower portion, as you can see, is very similar to the one that we did on the top. I'm just going to use Quadra. I don't want to bore you with the whole process. Uh, the last bit that I want to show you is how to do the this little guys right here. So, that guy right here. It, it's actually a little bit of a combination of both elements. You can now actually select two elements and make both elements live surfaces. So it's multiple objects live. This is relatively new to Maya 2024. So in this case, as you can see, I'm going to go to, to this elements and I'm going to start placing some points on this guy. And then we're going to go down. And then if you check this, it's like a, like just like a weird metal bit that just, it's been just to, oop, to hold things together. There we go. So this one goes like right around there. On the side, I would expect this thing to go to the side as well. It's probably going to be like this. I'm not sure if it's going to go all the way over here. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And then now, we just remove this, and as you can see, we were able to go across multiple objects because we have the multiple life surface selected. Again, just a couple of things that are really, really nice. Now, since this is a very low poly mesh, you can just, like, bevel the whole thing, and, uh, and that's going to be, like, more than enough, as you can see right there. One last thing that I might do in this particular area is just grab all of this vertex and, like, manually, like, pull them out a little bit. So when we smooth, we don't get any any weird effects. And there we go. This one, of course, we're going to mirror on the other side. And we get this very, very cool effect on the chest. And as you can see, as we keep adding more and more elements to the chest, the whole thing just becomes a little bit more interesting, right? Uh, we're definitely going to miss some handles over here. You can see that we barely see them here on the side. But that's just going to be like some blocks and, uh, and elements. Let me show you one last tool. I don't think we've used this tool uh, before. So it's going to be like a, like a last uh, little secret. I'm going to go to curves. And I'm going to use this EP curve tool. I'm going to draw what I would expect the like the metal bar to be like back here like that as you can see I'm not making it perfectly symmetrical there we go I do want to keep all of this guys like a little bit straighter there we go and then if we move this curve to the front or to the side in this case like right around there let's say that's where this thing is going to be hanging I am going to use another thing that's relatively new to Maya, which is the sweep mesh. You can find it here in Create Sweep Mesh or right here. 
and it literally just creates a like a ring or a tube around the element and you can change things such as like the profile so i'm gonna go a little bit bigger on the profile and that's it and the cool thing is if you change the the initial curve so if you modify any of the vertex of the initial curves you're gonna see that this thing changes as well so i'm gonna make it slightly asymmetrical right there so i could point like this right here and that's it again once you're happy you just delete history and now this is an independent element what else can we do here? We can grab, for instance, here's another bonus tool for you. So if you stayed till the end of this video, make sure to leave me a comment and tell me, hey, I learned all of the tricks in the video. So in this one, what we're going to do is we're just going to grab all of these edges. I'm going to say edit mesh and we're going to extract or duplicate. So this duplicates the edge right there. We're going to duplicate a little bit. And then I'm just going to extrude this up. Grab this borders right here. And that, my friends, is how you model. So I'm going to do a little bit of the details here where, again, you can just like uh, save yourself a little bit of time. For instance, this hooks right here look very nice. Here's what we can do. I can just like duplicate this object. Grab one of these faces. Oh. There we go. Center the pivot point. Just rotate this a little bit. Even if it's not perfectly flat, that's fine. Remember, we're not being... We want this chest to look like it's been through some through some shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> through some stuff. I'm always worried about swearing on YouTube because uh, we don't want to get like demonetized. We're not monetized yet, but we don't want to get like flagged for like inappropriate inappropriate content or anything. So let's keep this one right here. I like that one. We do need to keep it like in a place where it can actually rotate. So something like that. And then this one, I'm going to flip it to the other side. There we go. Of course, mesh display and reverse because the normals are reversed. That's it. Finally, we can grab like this guy right here, control D. And use this to, to decorate this new thing that we just... Got to just keep in mind that right now we have this on both sides. So ideally, we delete the faces on the other side before we mirror it again. And I am going to show you eventually, my friends, because I promised that we were going to do the full pipeline. I am going to show you how to do a rigging on this thing as well. So we're going to be doing some rigging, and I'm going to show you how we can rig like those little handles right here so that we can animate them if we need to and stuff like that. And that's it. Once we have all of this, we just shift, right click, and mirror to the X positive. Wait a second. Let's uh, freeze transformation first. There we go. And then we mirror to the other side. Ah, something didn't work. What didn't work here? Did that work? Okay, let's grab this one first. A G to mirror. There we go. G. I'm not sure why this is not working. Oh, it's because it's set to object. Let's change this to world. X bust. There we go. Same for this one. Same for this one. And same for this one. And as you can see, we got both sides of our chest already. So that's it, my friends. I'm going to finish some little things like this elements right here. Same process. I'm not going to like use any new tool. And uh, you're probably going to see that one on the thing, uh, thumbnail. And then the next one, we're going to be talking about materials and render. Okay, we're going to get this ready, get this like presentable uh, with proper materials and everything. And then we're going to jump into well, the next stages of this process. This is still going to take a while. As you guys know, we do live streams and a lot of stuff. So I'm taking this uh, process or this project a little bit slow. But if you're watching this later in the in the year then you probably probably see the whole thing ready so please let me know in the comments if you liked it so far if you want me to continue of course and i'll be seeing you in our live streams in our discord and in all of our socials it really helps if you can like and subscribe because we are growing as a channel and it's thanks to you my friends so that's it i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye